Okay, we're ready, Rico? I'm Hi, ready. Rico. Hello. How you doing? I'm glad Good. you're doing this. I'm flattered to be a I'm guest. I'm so excited. Uh, why don't you, why don't we have your version of the first time we met and then my version okay. and then we'll get into who so you are and what you do. So, the first version, I guess, we met was shortly after the uh, churning deal. Yep. Right? Uh, Dave did a live Periscope and I think a ton of people were like, hey, you're going to meet Rico now that you're in New York? And he was like, yeah, I'm going to sit down with that guy. Dan said, hey, uh, we're had in- you two ever met in person? Never. Okay. Uh, we're settled into the office. Like, let's let's go have dinner. I didn't know you were going to be there. Uh, I was amazed that you knew the content side of people as well as you did. Hmm. And then I was flattered that you were like, it, I went to give a hand. You said, no, we hugged. So it was. We had a hug. It was a hug. It was the first time That's we met. So, wait, so you hadn't met. So how long had you been Calling kicking in? around Barstool? <laughs> About three seasons of Pick'em just being a straight caller. Okay, got it. Like here and there. That's before it was like podcasting was, I joke, it's the second longest running podcast in the company history, yep. which it is, behind KFC Radio. Uh, but that was before it was like locked in. Mm-hmm. Like podcasting was a, hey, we're doing it on Wednesdays. It's dropping then. It wasn't like, a thing. It was a, oh yeah, like some weeks it was like Dave's traveling, Dan can't do it, like, and you just miss a week. Yeah. You know? Everything was casual back then. Yes. It was casual So it was then. about three years full of... 2013, 14, and 15, and then that churn deal, I believe, was 16. 2016, yep. Um, so how did you get introduced to Barstool Sports? I went to college in Massachusetts. Uh, I would read it occasionally. The term <laughs> uh, smoke show was thrown around by some people that very, were older than me, and I was like, where, yeah, yeah, where'd you get that? Where'd you get, like, College I thought the kid invented like it girls. until I, yeah, you look, you, you read it. Oh, you thought the kid invented it? I thought the kid invested? invented it. I thought okay. it was his thing. You're like, he's so smart. Right, yeah, he was, I was like, oh, you're a genius. Like genius. Yeah, and then you start looking into it, and uh, you just always had a feel that they were never really afraid to say the stuff that nobody was saying, uh, specifically to gambling. So, like, forever, ESPN, Fox, that was always, like, the bad boy on the table. Oh, well... You'd have to hint at it, like Chris Berman would do his segment, and it's like a big wink, like joke. Wink. Yeah, like a big joke, and it's like this is a multi multi million dollar industry. Like people are gambling on it. People are invested in the game because they're gambling on it. And Dave and Dan were never afraid to say it the way they covered it. So it was like, all right, this is an authentic voice. And then also the just the stuff they would cover. I I equate Barstool a lot to like a lunch table at high school if you do the right things. So like you can have a friend who's in theater, you can learn something about them. You have a friend who's in music, like you can, oh, you can talk to him about the new album that just came out. Like you if got you got the do, jocks. Yeah, if you do the right thing, like you could do it. But then there's also just the un, the funny underlying stories of like, t- I remember Tim Cobbett's birthday. Dan's got a friend who uh, does this. Like I have a friend who only eats Chinese food in the winter. He says he can't eat it in hot days. Like, and then you start to look at how we've evolved. Mr. Borelli's in content. Uh, largest wife is in content. Um, family, I mean, uh, Mush's brother is in, like, it's just this collection of weirdos that is authentic that's never been replicated. So it was, it's always fun to watch. And then when they started in the video contest, really when it blew up, mm-hmm. but it was just always something that you were like, oh, I like this. Like, okay. every, yeah, it's a release. All right. So you're a, sta- you're a Staten Island kid. Staten Island resident. Uh, proud Staten Island resident. Come yes, from a gets a bad rep. It does. So give the, give us a quick pitch for Staten Island. It's, I actually like Staten Island. I like it a lot. It's it's a definitely a great place to grow up. I think you get a mix of blue collar and like some wacky people that are still funny. It's it's it also I think in its core it we all care about each other more than anything. You saw that with the hurricane. Um, you see that when there's fundraisers that need to be done. Yeah. Like it's just very to community its, minded to its core. Yeah, it's definitely. Uh, We care about each other a lot. My cat's from Staten Island. I got scammed on the internet for this cat, and then I was like, I have to get a real cat. And then I literally drove to Staten Island. I think the other piece that's so great about Staten Island is you can get there on a ferry. Any place you can go to on a ferry is a great place. A ferry might be the most consistent transportation in New York City. Because it's 25 minutes no matter what. Unless, obviously, That's, there's 40 mile an hour winds. Or the like guy's drunk and he's running into the dock. I feel yeah, like that, that happens too. a lot. Yeah, but. but the subway can go out. A bus can mm-hmm. go out. Taxis cannot be around. Ferry, 25 minutes there and back. Do you well, like taking the minutes ferry? Away. I liked it, yeah. It's it's nice in the spring and the summer when you're outside. Yeah. You get a little bit of a breeze. Yeah, yeah I got you. Better than a Can you have a cocktail subway. on there or no? You can. Yeah, okay, I like Ferry that. Ferry beers. Ferry beers. Ferry beers are good. All right, so you grow up in Staten Island. How did you get into gambling? I, luckily enough, you're from a place that's, I like to call it like street smart. 
So mob run, like well, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> sta- yeah, like Staten Island, yeah, you know. right? So if you we live don't have in, to Chris Berman this thing, right, right, right. So if you <laughs> Let's live in, call it what it yeah, is, okay. Rico. If you if you live somewhere in the middle of Nebraska, like I remember, actually, my brother told the story. He had a kid who did a a pool, let's say, or like a one of those sheets. The sheets were always when I was a kid, they were ever. Uh, and the kid, it came down to the Monday night game, and he would have won ten grand if the Eagles covered. The kid from Philly. And my brother, and it comes into his like, Eagles don't cover. And he's like, yeah, I lost. I would have won the sheet. My brother goes, well, why don't you just place a wager on the Cowboys on the other side? Sure. And he's like, oh, oh, what do you mean? Like, how do you, like, some people it's over their head that you can even gamble. Like, those people exist. Lunacy. So I just always found it as, like, you were smarter than Vegas. So they say, all right, uh, Boston College is a three-point favorite against Syracuse. And you're like, I'm telling you, Syracuse is bet like, and the reasons why, like the research, how to prep, maybe it's be playing the game, like being interested in it. And then my dad would work with guys who would come over for dinner or like we'd talk, and he always knew about the small conferences. He, my dad tells the story, he came in Labor Day, and he's like, I'm telling you, Boise State, Hawaii, take the over. These two quarterbacks are unbelievable. Somebody looks in the paper, they're like, Ryan, this, these, they don't play this week. He's like, no, no, it's Thanksgiving, but I'm telling you right now. Go. Do it so, now. Yeah. Okay. So gambling, I always thought there was value in learning about the smaller conferences. Okay. So like everybody can tell you Alabama, Clemson, and that line, if that's the right way, it's gonna move. It's never gonna move. But Nevada laying three touchdowns against uh, San Jose State, if you know what Nevada is that much better, and and you pay attention to smaller conferences, there's less movement. You can know more about it. I feel like you have an edge. Okay. And what are you good? At? So are you? Is that what you're best at betting? College football because you get a week to prepare. Okay. In my opinion, like nowhere else, college basketball, I love to gamble on. Uh, but that those lines don't come out till the morning of. So when you talk about researching, like I can research. Do you research? Absolutely. Do you think Dan and Dave secretly research? Dan, a thousand percent. Dave, no chance. Dave's a little bit more busy, but he he does. Wa- I mean, he watch. He'll say his eyeballs, yeah. but he researches. He knows what's going on. I think you have to. It's, we talk about it all the time, like safe game, like just to play. If hey, if you're cool with just placing, basically flipping a coin, that's fine. But if you want to have the edge or you want to enjoy it, I think researching is the way to go so what did you feel when you started to call into pick em, which is a betting show like what was who was your t- describe rico bosco the sure. character so uh at the time they were taking callers and i never thought that I, it would evolve into this i was just cool being like i grew up on wfan like you know uh joe in brooklyn and and sal and riverset riverhead like all these guys had the names and a lot of these kids would call and it would just be very dry like oh, i like umass plus three what do you think like no name no flair nothing i was like this is an opportunity and, and this goes back to again why you like barstool you can't really interact with a fox media celebrity like yeah you might get a little bit on twitter but i don't even know if they have to have notifications turned on barstool was always engaging in that like oh like a funny thing happens or a reader and they would retweet it and then kind of run with that that joke they were always interactive with that so the way I looked at it was, hey, this is an opportunity to be a caller like consistently with literally number one and number two on the internet personality, yep. bar none. So I'm like, obviously I'm going to take it. You had a little flair. It, it's kind of really my own personality. People would say like, hey, you're just being yourself on the call, but you know you had to you turn it up a little bit. You you don't be afraid to kind of go at Dave, go at Dan. Add a little bit. And I think Dan's quote on the first voicemail was, this guy should have his own show. So if you were to describe, like if you were to pitch Rico Bosco, like pitch, give us a pitch. Who is he? It's a gambling personality that's a bit of, plays up a bit of a a lunatic vibe. Gives you every uh, cliche of gambler. A little bit of Stu Finer, you know. uh, Is he a hothead? Yes. Yeah, he's a hothead. Hothead. But also, I think Twitter can be a bad place. I try to... uh, Bring some positivity as well. Okay. Some things are bigger he's than sports. He's a good guy. Ramon, yeah. yeah, he's a good. So it's a good guy. It's it's like a character. Like one of you, you know, I I say if you have like a crew of the same people at your dinner party, it's going to be pretty boring, yeah. right? Like you need a little bit. You want bit, this guy at your dinner party. Yeah, he's going to talk sports. Absolutely. He's a good person. He's interested. Right. He, you have, Rico Bosco has some peccadillos where like you get just real angry. So like explain, like give, <laughs> give us a, give us a portrayal of that. Well, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's, a lot of it plays into the character. Um, but I say all the time, like it's, don't tell me, people say it all the time. Like, oh, this guy sucks. Like I could do better than him. You had the same. That's why I really don't apologize. Everyone had the same opportunity that I had with those voicemails. Now you might've missed it. 
it was back before you started reading Boys Soul, so not, I guess not everybody. But at that time, everybody had the same opportunity that I had. Um, so I don't really apologize for how I got in, like working the angle. Um, but just my main thing is don't tell me why I suck. Tell me why you're good. Or okay. show me, you know yeah. what I mean? So like there's people who do that. Some people do it here. It's like do your own thing. You know what I mean? Like, yep. So people who listen to this, I, I – I, some are core barstool folks, and then there's just a whole other set that probably is not paying attention. So, like, describe the riders and what's a skill. Okay. Like, give the translation into the Rico Bosco sure. world. So, I mean, you need some kind of fans, yep. right? You need you like, have fans, like have a group. Yeah, I think you saw that in India. It was bit. actually I, that w- I was really proud in India. I, I okay. was like, I can't believe we're here from like Rico Bosco, this anonymous voicemail leaving hothead from Staten Island <laughs> now has people coming up asking for pictures and right. you were so gen- generous and gentle with them like it was amazing but g- so you explain the g- give a sense of your tribe all right so the riders is full-blown a cult I'm not afraid to admit that we endorse cults here right yeah it's a cult like following uh it's basically anybody who just either rides at, with you yeah at the time took my picks agrees with uh you know my beliefs maybe uh Runs with like the the uh, feuds I have like on mm-hmm. Twitter or, or funny like old things like oh I hate the Yankees and the names on the jersey like different stuff like that. Um, getting um, I guess getting back to the cult thing. I was in Arizona for a bachelor party. Uh, my party had like left. I was kind of in the pool like maybe enjoying a little sun. Had some high noons, and they kind of leave. I go out to the hotel like I'm like no phone no nothing. And I run into a couple of kids that recognize me. I'm like, hey, I hate to do this. Like, I need to use your phone. <laughs> Call my brother. He ends up getting an Uber. Uh, the Uber doesn't come. Like, so then I end up getting a regular cab and I'll pay them when I get there. But my brother tells me when I get there that five minutes after I left, the kid called and goes, hey, I just want to let you know I'm a rider. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck <laughs> is going on with what you have? I'm like, yeah. So it's, uh, it's a cult like following. And what's a skill? A skill is, comes really from like a term from like a almost like a derelict well i have to describe derelict it's like a skill like it's it's skelly behavior somebody who doesn't do things that are necessarily on the up and up okay and people who don't like you are in that bucket yes okay and you i feel that it's funny whenever i'm like going someplace i always laugh about this like we'll be on like the the plane with pen talking about like what do we do with this what do we do with that and honestly Dave and Dan, all they want to talk about is me. And it, all they want to do is to make fun of what's happening with you. Like all conversations, <laughs> I feel like all dead, all hang time goes back to Rico Bosco. Always goes back to Rico Bosco. So are they riders? Are they skells? Or, like who are they to you? They run what I call the biggest, the best power sweep in the history of the internet. So they're a thousand, they at their core are two of the most loyal, uh, supportive, intelligent brilliant funny guys on the planet now do they have fun at my expense a thousand percent but i don't think i think that's what worked too is just the chemistry with us like you can't replicate that at, at all um i don't think you could plug there's people more talented than me here there's people smarter than me here without a doubt you can't plug anybody else into that pick them and have that chemistry mm-hmm. there's no there's no notes there's no prep that is turn on the camera and go and it can go anywhere it could go for two hours it could go for 15 minutes it's it's the, it's the it's my favorite thing to do. like in ten years they could be retired millions sitting wherever and I would still call be like you want to do pick them like for free <laughs> I would enjoy that hour more than anything despite as mad as I get after I'll get in the car and drive home and be like like great well, that's what I say all the time like hell of a show like yep. it's it's a hell of a show regardless now you're funny too where I feel like you to for you to accept people they have to meet some threshold of. I think it's good personness. Actually, I think you yes. have a you have a high good person threshold. You also have like a low tolerance for people who don't have a point of view and for idiots. So, but I I often find that I'm having to pay attention to like who's in or who's out with okay. you here. So, who's in and who's out with you here? Pretty much everybody. I think. I mean, we'll ask the you know do I do I come as a like hostile guy around the office, right? So that's my thing. As I think, uh, as long as you don't throw. The first punch, like I said, you tell me why I suck, I'm good with you. I think, and you can learn from a million different people here. Uh, I'm fascinated by, I think you said it in the in the company presentation that Robbie Fox's outline for guests 
it's supposed to be like he's the, a very good the best ever. Yep. Yeah, like so now I got to pick Robbie Fox's brain. Mm. I've talked to Riggs a little bit about some stuff with Benchmob mm-hmm. live event wise that we want to get into. Dan and Dave, obviously, uh, I pick PFT's brain as far as interviews. Mm-hmm. I listen to a lot of stuff KFC does. How do you ask questions? How do you transition? How do you not just ask, uh, what was it like winning the national title? And yeah. no matter what they say, you ask the next question. Yeah. Like, I feel like they do that a lot with the sideline reporters. So um, you can get more from just listening. Just let it go organically. You can learn a lot from everybody here. As far as who's out, it's basically just who threw the first punch. Okay, so Jeff Nadu th- threw the first punch. Big yes, Cat was like, you have to bring up Jeff Nadu. And I was like, Big Cat, we're going to have a mature conversation. We are going to have a mature conversation. Okay. Definitely through the first punch. I have the receipts to prove it. Do you forgive people or no? Yeah, I do. Glennie like committed. Gaz. I feel like Gaz is... Gaz is, a, Gaz is in Dave and Dan's three minutes. I mean, he's yeah. the biggest internet troll on the planet. Like, there's the running, you know, the jokes of, like, the control room. The control, I hate the control room because they messed up the score. And then I'll go in there and be like... You guys good? And then, like, one kid doesn't, like, the new guy never gets it and thinks, who's this maniac? But everybody else pretty much knows what's going on. So, yeah, have fun. It's, it's like, a, it goes back to Barstool's organic thing of just busting chops. Yeah. You know, you, like, you see, for, if you were new to a group of girls or friends, you'd be like, these guys are, or these girls are savages to each other. It's like, oh, no, they're the best friends. Yeah. They're the only ones who can get away with it. Yeah, that's right. I know? like people like that. Yeah, though. and then you if two, somebody on the street says it, the two of you want to fight the person Yeah, on the that's street. right. Do you think that we're becoming more of anomaly, an anomaly as people become softer? Like, do you think, do you think Barstool, more people, I can't decide if they're, are more people copying what they're what we're doing to create their own tribes and cults or that we're becoming more and more of an anomaly because the world is getting so soft and you know cotton bubble wrapped i don't think there'll ever be somebody who could create what we did because of how the world is soft if that makes sense Mm -hmm. so like even in if it was created in 07 08 like you look then you look at the peak of what, and what it really took, like, it takes a while to, to grow it. Um, yeah, I would say we're an anomaly. The world is, I mean, you look at just kind of how it is now. Like, there's no tough, there's no more accepting or, or telling kids, yeah, you're you're not going to get that job. You're not going to win. The, like, not everybody gets a trophy. Like, that's, you can learn lessons. That's why I care so much about sports. You can learn a ton of lessons mm-hmm. from your experiences in sports. Yep. And, yeah, I think we're an anomaly because the world is kind of soft. Or yep. just... At its core, they're taking like what what somebody does and, and nitpick it. Like, yeah. oh, well, you didn't do this. You didn't. Do, it's like the equation of like I just gave you a holiday ham and you complain you have no bread. Yeah, you yeah, got gotcha. you. Like, don't nitpick what's going on. I don't think it'll ever be replicated. Okay, and what made you like cross the transom? Like you used to come in, you didn't want to be on camera. Right. You're like you couldn't be on camera because of your job. What made you? What made you decide to jump in two feet? There's. I guess an analogy of uh, like a party bus or a train leaving the station and traveling the world, right? So uh, the first thing I was ever offered that I really still kind of kick myself is uh, advisors Mm -hmm. with with Stu Finer. I didn't fully – and Dave, you know, he pitched it in five minutes, and he was like, we're bringing back Stu Finer. We could do it. At the time, I was like, I'm not really like an NFL – gambler i didn't I, I didn't really get the full like what it was so i missed out on that so you're like fuck like i sh- probably should have rolled with that all right what what comes next the pen deal right so now hey we're doing more stuff with gambling all right we'll get you on the, the live streams um we'll get you on that so i was on that it was off camera the real one where it was like and and dan has talked about it all the time the first time he was asked to be on the rundown like i can't miss that opportunity cannot miss it so the Positive Vibes Only Tour, which I'm hoping we bring back. Yeah, we're going to bring back. back. Yep. Dave was like, we were walking on the street somewhere, and he's like, hey, if you want, we're going to do these four tours. Like, we're in. And I was like, all right, I'm in. Shortly after the pandemic hit, obviously that's it. Um, but it's just, you look at it as how many times can you miss that party bus yeah. or that train, and people come back and tell you the stories before you eventually yeah. get You're on. Joking. So when, when uh, the pen deal came up, when the opportunity to – travel like enjoy, watch games cover games like dave was like you can do as much as you want um i was like all right i'm in let's Great. go so here you and are for a while i worried you know you always worried about the five percent of the internet that would be bad but for the most part in real t- you see people out 95 percent of it's positive yeah, it was- so it's time to focus on 95 percent. that's great um 
what how would you what how do you think the Barstool Sportsbook and how you guys talk about betting and just think about it is different than a DraftKings or a FanDuel or any of those guys? I think we're uh, devoted to the customers. We know like who we we know we acknowledge that everyone watching the game for the most part is financially invested. We unlike most of the competitors know that from on Monday, people are looking at the lines for Sunday. Like again, the research, like everyone knows what's going on. Um, I think we offer the experience. We offer uh, the player bonuses, the merch. Like just to have a uh, a former NBA player or a celebrity, which I've seen on two billboards in the past two months. Like what is that? Yeah, who cares? What does that do? Yeah, all right. You have a name. You spend a lot of money on the advertising. The billboard looks cool. But like we're organic, we know what's going on. You know, like the the can't lose parlay, the boosted odds, the fact you can call par- in without a doubt. Yeah. yeah, I mean, pick central. Like you can engage with it. It's it's not to be matched. Nobody is gonna replicate that because you have you have to have built it for so long, doing it off the radar, which a ton of people didn't do. Like they, if so, for fifteen years, nobody they didn't want to cover it. It was, and now all of a sudden, all the lines are allowed to scroll yeah, now across the bottom. Well, it. you missed you missed yeah. the boat because yeah. for those years we were building how we covered gambling. And why do you think that Barstool is different? Like you and I have talked about this a lot. Like, what's what makes this company so different? At its core, it's a it's a collection of like really really smart people. Um, the leadership, like as much as uh, Dave breaks jobs. He knows a way to, to push your buttons to make you to better. work better. Uh, Dan is more, hey, let me run this idea by you and explain why it's going. Um, and then I just think the the catapult of, of what you've done of, of, hey, we need to do this. We're going to organize. I mean, is it crazy to say we've kind of outgrown these two floors already? Yeah, we're, we're right? completely outgrown. Yeah, exactly. So that's for a company that was always the, oh, the bad boy on the block. They'll never do it. They'll never do it. It's like. Enjoy the view from the rear view because we're already ahead of you. Yeah, that's you know? right. So it's it's really – and again, like I said, just you you can pick everyone's brain here. And I think you learn something new. Yeah. And everybody's just funny in their own different way. So it's it's never going to be replicated, and it's an awesome ride to be on. You come in, and people are always like, I can't believe you go there. I can't believe you talk to these guys. Like, in a, like I can't believe you do that. Or in well, a, and so more lucky. so, I mean, my, my brother put it a good way. Uh, we were watching the Super Bowl together, and he's like, you know what I can't figure out is like – Dave's worth a hundred million dollars, and he argues with you for an hour about college football. Like everywhere, and that maybe that's the core of it too. Like nowhere else should these people who have kind of like the screw you money still be messing around with me, Eddie. Cl- like it's a you know the island of misfit toys, yeah. and there's so many left. La- but I think that's also they love that. You know what I love? He'll about never, them? he'll Dave never will, give Dave that will back. will always have that group. Absolutely, he'll always never have that give group. that. Doesn't back. matter how much money he'll that guy has. He'll never give that back. He loves to like that's how he got up. Those are the people you surround yourselves yeah. with. That's how it goes. Yeah, I love that. Okay, what questions do you have for me? All right, I have uh, the first one was from my wife. Oh, I like that. Yesterday was our anniversary, so I should happy anniversary. With her. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, Skell moved to get married on Wednesday, though, right? Kind of. Yeah, I know. Maybe it's not Skell; it's just cheap. Yeah. Uh, it was before I had the Barcelona money. Um, <laughs> are you are you a Bravo fan? No. Okay, then that's out. Is she a, bar- is she a Bravo fan? Oh, every house like diehard. Yeah, every housewife going. I don't watch TV. Okay, well you. I appreciate it though. Like I think that there are people who get who love that world, and the housewives are so ridiculous. Like Rhea and Fran love that. Right. You know what I mean? And honestly, I think after a long day, if you need an escape, like that's a really good place to lose yourself. Right. I just, I, I'm, I just, sorry, I don't watch Bravo. She watches all of them. Okay. Um, so one of my favorite terms or phrases, she watches all day. Wait, well, w- would we get along? I think I'd love your. Oh, wife. absolutely. Yeah. She's a sweetheart. Yeah. You would definitely get along. Uh, one you of my. About, f- wait, sorry, just a quick, quick story about Rico's wife, which I loved, loved, loved. So I, I really enjoy you. I, you are one of my favorite people. You, you make me smile. I loved that awkward first interaction of like, it, it, Rico was like the junkyard dog where you weren't supposed to get that close to Rico. And Dave would be like, he's a crazy person. Just like, like he, he's he kind of plays that up too. He's a crazy person. Followed your name. I think the first 150 <laughs> times it was ever uttered in front of me. And I'd be like, okay, well, why don't I get Rico on a contract? Whatever. He Okay. Rico's a crazy person. You know. I mean? So I met you the first time and I was 
not intimidated, but I was like, I had the junkyard dog mentality. And then I was like, well, we're, I've heard so much about you. I feel like I know you and I love a junkyard dog. So I wanted to give you a hug, but I also, what I really love about you is you play it up. You love where you're from. I think so few people truly love where they're from with pride. And that is, and to stand for something I think is becoming so rare. And then I love how much you want to learn from other people here. Like it is so inspiring to me. It, it Like as much as you're giving everybody shit and you like this person and he's a skell and you're freaking out in the hallway, you, you truly, you're such an optimist and you are such a stickler for, I think very few things. Like some things are larger than sports, yep. being a good person being chivalrous like we and we're on the plane to indiana big cat is just like needling rico <laughs> about being sexist and you're just like apoplectic do you know what i mean so it's like it's really great to see someone who's so values driven i think you're really values driven and i i i think that you're just fiercely fiercely loyal like i don't know if that's a staten island thing or a, your family thing but so long story short we're on the plane and rico is spiffed out in this outfit Okay, he's got new, brand new white sneakers. He's got a little acid wear, acid wash pair of jeans. Are these? Yeah, I think they are these. And then a Hawaiian shirt. And Rico's wife like was excited that he was going to the party and wanted you spiffed up, so she like got you an outfit. I thought that was so thoughtful. She's uh, she's literally the best person I've ever met. That's awesome. Long story short, uh, she was working a job in California while going to school, and uh. A friend of the person she worked for had a sick husband and three kids that needed to take care of at like 13, 10, and like 9. So, Animal House. The friend asked the woman, because she was connected through a bank, like she was a pretty prominent woman, hey, do you know anybody? Well, I got this girl who works for me. Maybe she can go. So, she went and lived, because the mother had to go six hours for the cancer treatment, and she was gone. So, she basically uh, lived with these kids and raised three kids while working and, and going go to, to school. school. Yeah. So That's among the many woman. other things of, you know, being supportive and yeah. just being an awesome person, it's to be able to like, a, you're going to let a stranger into your house. And one of them ended up coming to our wedding because it meant oh, so, so much, much to, to yeah. That's so great. she's the best. Okay. I love that. Okay. Sorry. That uh, was your, so I the, don't watch Bravo. It's okay. Out. <laughs> yep. uh, uh, quick. No. Uh, Hard one no. of the, one of my favorite, phrases is the juice is worth the squeeze mm-hmm. right so you've talked all the time about how you knew about Barcelona and how that separated you um and they, and they never really looked at you which i guess we could get to like chip on your shoulder of how you operate here but when you were weighing the decision to come to Barcelona, knowing what all the flack was going to be like you were ru- i think you've said it you kind of run out of town as far as yeah. Like people, your your people colleagues like or that. Yeah. that were friends, yeah, a thousand percent. So, how did you know that the juice was going to be worth the squeeze as far as what Barcelona was about and why you could take it? You know what I mean? Like yeah. you were going to have a million headaches during the day and through the years. What you can you can go get a prominent job anywhere. Yeah. Why come here and build it the way you did? Yeah, like I just there's something about Barcelona that grabs you. I think it's like it's it's the lunchroom table it's exactly what you mentioned of it which is like one of the things i think is so interesting is there's this conception of like a frat boy company right but when you really if you actually spend any time looking at barstool it's not it's the fact that there's the nerds and the theater geeks there's very few jocks there's a couple jocks there's some wise asses there's a depressed mopey you know alt kid like there's really everyone at the table and it's that there's there were and to be fair back then there weren't that many people at the table but there was something about barstool that made me buy tom brady t-shirts or made me read what dave had to say or to look at like the shittiest production quality ever for like the rundown <laughs> and it was there was also something um where all the guys I went to college with just talked in Barstool and texted it. They Barstool was shared by text back then. Like it was always just texted in group chats. And um, I felt like to the juice, juice is worth the squeeze. Like 
I don't think any of us thought that Barstool would be as successful as it is today. Like, I, I don't think we foresaw that. Um, but what I did feel was that this would be the most intense, most fun, most challenging, most dramatic, like fulfilling job that I could, I wouldn't even call it a job. Do you know what I mean? Like it would be the most unlikely thing I could do, but I felt like I would be happy here. If that makes sense. Like I felt like I would be really fulfilled. I was tired of like, I knew how to put lipstick on the pig. I knew how to have a big business meeting I knew how to do deals like all that kind of shit but I felt like there was something so raw and real about this place and what I was feeling was so burnt out from what exactly what you described at the beginning of like the fox of it all the ESPN like I was so tired of that and I was in a place where I was like every 24 months I was getting really sick of the job that I had and I wanted something that I could really immerse myself into so the juice has 100% been worth the squeeze. But I also think what made it so worthwhile is like we did it all together. Like we were so deliberate and conscious about squeezing it that it the good things came out of it. Right. Okay. Um, Does that feel like an acceptable answer no, to you, Rico? No, it's an awesome acceptable okay, answer. Great. Absolutely. Uh, what advice for the youth who listen? She, she, my wife. Oh, these are all your wife's questions. No, no. I, you have your own questions? I wrote them. I wrote them, but I told her, type them out. Okay. Uh, Please. Not great. What advice uh, for the youth, especially women? Two youths? Two youths. Do you know the movie? Yes. It's uh, my cousin Vinny. Nice. What advice for the youth who listen to this podcast or the next generation would you give as far as just in general? Like, so, um, especially the way you did, like, you weren't really accept, like, is, is it, hey, you're, you, you're going to have a hurdle in front of you, like embrace the suck. Like what is yeah, I basically because um, there, there should be a lot of, of women who listen to this, especially younger, if, you know, court, like or it could be inspired. You inspire a lot of people. Like what would be the advice? You're what would to I them? say? I would say I was having this conversation with a friend of mine the other day about his son who is, is like, how do I get a job at Barstool? And the kid's like 10 years old. So it's like we got a little while and we swear too much. <laughs> I feel badly about that. I'm like apologizing to the parent. <laughs> Uh, I'm like, it's a bunch of delinquents and degenerates, but sure, we'll take your kid. Uh, I do think if we if, if we started having content kids, pretty soon people would start copying us. Like, I do oh, think kids time. could be very funny. Big time. That's okay. the first Barstool conversation. Kids. Um, but, okay, so I think there's a couple things. One is that I think when you're a kid or you're younger, I think the desire to conform and be the desire to conform is very strong, like to fit in, go with the flow, do the quote unquote right thing. I think, I think that the more, if you either you're a parent or you're a person, the more you can fight the, you should do, you should be the better off you are. I think that the people who have succeeded here are people like you who are a little tweaked or did it their own way or and are unapologetic about how they got here. I think the more time people spend trying to fit in with a status quo, the the less time they're spending on being creative or being right. interesting or, or developing a skill, right? Like let, let alone being a personality, just like developing skill. Um, I think the second thing is you have to work really hard for anything that you want. And it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be successful. It's not going to be pretty all the time. Like I failed for so much of my career and everyone's like, oh, you like snapped your fingers and you're at Barcelona. It wasn't like that. Like it's so there's so much ugly time that's spent on a beautiful career. And I think that's true if you're an athlete. I think that's true if you're a personality. I think that's true if you're a business person. And what I worry about for people is that they don't want to put the work in. Right. Like you want the Instagram version of life, which is like, oh, I'm, you know, everything's going to be great. I'm going to have the perfect boyfriend. I'm going to have the perfect job. Like my outfit's going to be great. I'm going to have a perfect body, especially for women. And I think that that's very, very dangerous. Um, And then I think the third thing is that you have to find people who you can learn from and go into every situation you're in, seeing what you can get out of it. 
Like I've gotten so much out of Barstool. Like if you if they told me you don't I don't have to pay you and you just come to work every day, I would probably still do it because there's so much I learn from people here. And I think being in places that you learn from people is it's just really important and to recognize what you're learning. Does that make sense? No, absolutely. I think it may be coming from I came out of college in the worst job market ever. So like I have pockets of of experience like probably more than you know you you get a degree in finance from nyu and you're going to one of the big firms and Mm -hmm. you're wearing your suit and you're like so that's great and you can make a lot of money my dad wore a suit for 20 years and and supported a family like awesome but there's a culture of people of us who it's kind of like a buffet table like i took a little bit of this job Mm -hmm. like while it sucked but but i should take a little bit of this i did have this i did have that oh that was a good boss or even you can learn just as much shitty bosses are great without a doubt you can learn just as much like hey when i get in like how that guy made me feel like i'm out with that girl made me feel like i'm out you know um so yeah i think the the road less traveled is definitely and also that it's long you know what i mean like if you were to look back at your first voicemail would you, that you would ever be working here is probably you would be like that's ridiculous right you you will go on to be a bigger personality or you may go back to a normal job like you don't know i don't know so it's it's i think also people get caught up in what's right now what's right in front of them and it's like life is long uh, you know if we're lucky like life is long and you can do any number of things one of my favorite quotes life's about the story that's a great original quote, quote. It's a Rico Bosco I'm original. I'm pretty sure if you can find it in print, I will apologize to the guy, but I'm pretty sure it's my own quote. It, that's 100% the title. Way to go, Rico. All right. Any and other questions for me? I got the last oh, one. Okay. We'll end on a positive note. If you were dis- on a deserted island, what three things would you bring with you? Oh, great question. And why? Okay. Deserted island, I would bring coffee. Okay. I would. Does your phone count or no? Phone, I guess, counts. Yeah, well, it's 2021. We'll say you 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 can have the phone the still works. You could have the internet. Okay, fine. I'd bring my phone. I would bring a dog. Okay. What would you bring? I guess I have to go with the phone. Uh, probably try. I would. I'm not a deserted island guy, so I'd be calling people <laughs> trying Maybe to get off. Get off. Uh, you would prob- be hoping there's some riders yeah, yeah, around. Yeah. I'd probably bring. Well, I guess the f- the phone cancels out the radio. Do you need some kind of something Spotify to listen to? Spotify counts on your phone. All right, fine. Yeah. So I'll go with, with phone counts. Uh, Arizona iced tea. Oh, really? That's your go-to? Yeah, that's my go-to. The 99 cent can. I say yeah. it's, the, it's the only recession-proof thing left in this country. Hmm. 50 years. Hasn't changed 99 cents. Still priced the same. No inflation. Still priced the same. No inflation. I love that. Shout uh, out Arizona iced tea. The best. Uh, probably Reese's peanut butter cups. Okay. Unlimited supply. I okay. could, and then I'll have you'll have nutrients to live on and Okay, fine. Just go talk to the yeah. trees and make yeah, friends that way. That's I'll right. figure it out. Okay, but that's a good answer, Rico. All right, thanks, Rico. This was awesome. It was a pleasure. Anything Thank you. else you want to cover that I didn't cover for you? Uh no, we're gonna be doing some traveling with uh Bench Mom. Okay, great. Like I said, we're working on the live events, hopefully in the fall, maybe some live shows at some campuses. Great. Um and just it's How really, can people follow you? They can follow me on Twitter which is my biggest platform, Tweet Like a Maniac, uh, Instagram, and I'm on the TikTok, but I'm not... You're not there yet. I'm not good. I got to figure out how okay, to... There's some old clips. I know. I want to get the the old throwback clips and get everything going. Okay. At Rico Bosco? Uh, Twitter is return underscore of underscore RB. Yep. And Twitter... I mean, I'm sorry. Instagram is, I believe, Rico underscore Bosco. I like okay. the underscores. Yeah, a little separation. Not? Yeah, I like it. Yeah. All right, thanks, Rico. Thank you. Bye.